Although the Padishah Emperor Shaddam Karina IV is not a main character in Frank Herbert's Dune series, his presence and influence undeniably cast a large shadow over the unfolding events. An exploration of Shaddam's character reveals a man driven by profound jealousy and insecurity, emotions that significantly impact his decisions and actions. These characteristics, while not often in the spotlight, serve as a catalyst for much of the story's progression. They create conflict, set pivotal events into motion, and provide an intriguing study of the implications of such emotions when coupled with supreme power. In this video, I'd like to examine the most powerful man in the universe, Emperor Shaddam Karino IV, through the lens of his envy, exploring how this trait underlies his actions and ultimately shapes the dynamics and trajectory of the Dune saga. Spoiler warning if you are unfamiliar with Frank Herbert's Dune. At the heart of Shaddam's jealousy is his deep-seated insecurity, specifically toward House Atreides. The roots of this fear run deep, tracing back to the growing power of House Atreides, whose influence threatened to overshadow Shaddam's own control over the galaxy. This feeling is not unfounded, considering Duke Leto Atreides' reputation for being a just and compassionate leader, a stark contrast to the Emperor. As the Mentat Thufir Hawit said, a popular man arouses the jealousy of the powerful. Therefore, the increasing adoration for Leto among the noble houses of the Landsrad stoked the embers of Shaddam's envy, stirring a potent blend of fear and jealousy that would eventually dictate his actions. Duke Leto commanded widespread respect and popularity within the Landsrad due to his kind but firm leadership style. He embodied a sense of integrity and fairness often absent in the cutthroat politics of the Imperium. His ability to empathize with his subjects, coupled with his tactical acumen, painted him as a true leader of the people, with attributes that resonated with many within the Landsrad and elicited fierce, undying loyalty. Consequently, Duke Leto's approach to governance created a stark contrast to the rulership of Emperor Shaddam and the Harkonnens, making him a revered figure in the political landscape. This popularity and influence, coupled with Leto's growing military strength, is what compounded the Emperor's envy and insecurity. In the Duke's War Council were the finest warriors and military strategists of the known universe. Leto's war masters, Gurney Halleck and Duncan Idaho, forged the small Atreides military to within a hair as good as the Emperor's infamous Sardaukar soldiers. For thousands of years, the dread Imperial troops held a notorious reputation among the Landsrad as the most formidable fighting force in the Imperium. It is widely known that it would take the combined forces of all the other great houses to defeat House Carino Sardaukar. While the Emperor's power and influence was maintained, Duke Leto was in a position to enlarge his force, to make it every bit as strong as the Sardaukar. Shaddam's leadership style also reveals how his jealousy and insecurity significantly undermined his command, contributing to the erosion of loyalty and increase of cynicism within the ranks of the once legendary Sardaukar. His inability to inspire respect and true allegiance among his most potent military force represents a significant weakness in his leadership. In his bid to maintain control and secure loyalty within the Sardaukar, Shaddam allowed for a rapid surge of promotions within their ranks. However, rather than boosting morale and allegiance, this strategy backfired. It led to an erosion of the merit-based system that had previously characterized the Sardaukar's hierarchy, diluting the significance of rank and breeding a sense of apathy and cynicism among the troops. Thus, the Sardaukar became increasingly disillusioned, as promotions seemed arbitrary and detached from personal achievement. This miscalculated move further alienated Shaddam's most potent military force, contributing to the growing disarray within their ranks and exacerbating their declining fervor and dedication. Notably, Shaddam's envy manifests most conspicuously in his manipulation of House Atreides and House Harkonnen. Intent on eliminating the threat posed by House Atreides, he maneuvers Duke Leto into taking stewardship of the fief of Arrakis. Knowing full well the dangers and treacherous nature of this assignment and House Harkonnen's deep-seated hatred for the Atreides, 
Shaddam's thirst for power and control drove his decision to fuel the war between the two houses and demonstrated how jealousy warped his judgment and thinking. The emperor's envy extended not only to House Atreides, but also to House Harkonnen, who had built up an enormous amount of wealth in their time on Arrakis. In orchestrating the attack on House Atreides, Shaddam knew that House Harkonnen would have to incur significant costs, requiring them to pay exorbitant fees to the Spacing Guild for the transportation of troops and equipment necessary for the assault. While their plan allowed the Baron to satiate his hunger for revenge against the Duke, it also drained House Harkonnen's resources, subtly undermining their wealth and potential influence. Despite their alliance, Shaddam's actions clearly demonstrated his innate suspicion toward any potential threat to his reign. His ability to orchestrate such moves highlighted his keen political acumen, revealing the lengths he would go to to protect his supremacy even at the expense of his allies. The Emperor's anxiety over losing power was heightened by his lack of a male heir. This situation was orchestrated by the secretive Bene Gesserit Sisterhood in order to achieve a long-term agenda aiming to eventually control the Imperial throne through genetic and political manipulation. With their ability to control the sex of their offspring, they ensure that Shaddam's wife only gave him daughters. In an era governed by patriarchal succession, this lack of a male heir intensified Shaddam's insecurity about his dynasty's future and his own waning power. His attempts to manipulate events to maintain his hold on power had unintended and profound consequences, setting the stage for his downfall. As the Harkonnen squeezed the planet under the brutal rule of Beast Raban, the resolve of the Fremen was unwittingly strengthened. The Harkonnens then struggled to meet the spice quotas amidst escalating losses as the Fremen resistance intensified. This escalating situation on Arrakis eventually forced Shaddam's hand, compelling him to intervene directly in an attempt to restore control and maintain the critical flow of spice. However, his decision to intervene placed him in a precarious position. By traveling to Arrakis, the epicenter of the Fremen resistance, he was exposed to a direct confrontation with the forces aligned against him, including the unstoppable Fremen warriors, whose might had been augmented with the power of the Weirding Way, taught to them by their leader, Paul Atreides. Shaddam's defeat is steeped in irony. The very forces he hoped to suppress end up being the architects of his undoing. His downfall is a stark illustration of the self-defeating power of jealousy and fear. By underestimating his adversaries, the Fremen, and more importantly, Paul Atreides, Shaddam set the stage for his own failure on the barren desert planet of Arrakis. His fear-driven decisions, aimed at preserving his reign, led to the demise of his rule, culminating in his forced abdication to Paul. Overall, Shaddam's defeat sends a clear message a leadership style rooted in jealousy, manipulation, and insecurity is not sustainable and often leads to its own undoing. His fate emphasizes the destructive potential of envy and fear, particularly when they dictate the actions of those in power. But I'm curious to know what you think of the jealousy of Emperor Shaddam. Is there any one factor that you think contributed the most to his downfall? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe for more Dune and other sci-fi and fantasy news and lore. Thank you all so much for your support. And as always, have a very nerdy day.